This is a quick review of some of the major blood vessels in uh, the thorax going into the arm in the cat. Notice then one uh, removes the ribs uh, that at first there is the parietal pericardium which surrounds the heart. Uh, this is a serous membrane which helps it to uh, move without developing blisters and adhesions to the surrounding uh, lungs. Uh, once that is removed, however, the parietal pericardium, one can observe then the outer surface of the heart, the epicardium, uh, which is also part of this serous membrane, its visceral layer. Coming off of the arch of the aorta, there are two arteries. Now, this is a little different than in humans, all right? Uh, there are similarities in that on the right, there is this large brachiocephalic trunk, and that the brachiocephalic trunk only exists on the right. Like humans, uh, the left subclavian artery going towards the arm arises from the arch of the uh, aorta. It does not come uh, from another structure such as the brachiocephalic trunk. The difference uh, between uh, cats and humans is that in cats, the left uh, common carotid comes off the brachiocephalic trunk in addition to these other two arteries, the right common carotid and the right subclavian. In humans, the brachiocephalic trunk uh, forms uh, the right common carotid and the right subclavian, but the left common carotid comes directly off the arch of the aorta. So once again, in cats, there are only two blood vessels leaving the arch of the aorta traveling superiorly, the um, brachiocephalic trunk on the right side and then the prominent left subclavian going uh, to the arm. Uh, in this uh, cat, the uh, veins have been removed so that one can better uh, view the arteries. Notice the prominent common carotid arteries on either side of the trachea. Uh, when the veins are present, I ask my students to try to imagine that they see the letter Y twice. A base of a Y that then has its two branches, but then each of these branches then itself uh, then forms a Y. And so, when one does that, if one were to imagine uh, the letter Y twice, the first Y is formed when the superior vena cava joins the heart, and that branches into two brachiocephalic veins. Notice that the brachiocephalic veins are symmetrical, unlike the brachiocephalic trunk. In arteries, there is only a brachiocephalic on the right side, whereas there is both a brachiocephalic vein on the right side and on the left side. And from the brachiocephalic veins, then a Y is formed, the jugular, which will drain uh, deoxygenated blood from the head, and the subclavian uh, vein. So the subclavian and jugular veins uh, for, uh, uh, fuse to form the brachiocephalic vein, the left and right brachiocephalic veins fuse to form the superior vena cava. There is a minor uh, difference uh, in the jugular uh, between humans and cats, um, uh, which I tend not to stress uh, with my students. Notice that the subclavian then proceeds to the arm. So the subclavian artery and vein in the armpit region will form the axillary artery and vein, which then becomes the uh, brachial artery and vein uh, as it travels along the humerus. And then uh, this would uh, branch in the forearm to form the, br uh, the radial and ulnar uh, artery and uh, vein. So once again, the short subclavian reaches the armpit region to become the axillary, which becomes uh, the brachial, and then it uh, divides uh, further. The uh, arch of the aorta uh, has those two superior branches, uh, but then uh, proceeding inferiorly from it is the descending aorta, which can be broken into the thoracic aorta, and the thorax, and then the abdominal aorta. So here, when one pulls the lungs to expose the left side, one can observe the thoracic uh, aorta proceeding uh, from the arch. On the right side, this is not the uh, superior vena cava that one uh, observes when one uh, pulls the right uh, lungs back, but rather an alternate route back uh, from the inferior portions of the body, that is the azagus. Here in the cat, one can observe that in the abdomen we have an abdominal aorta 
and an inferior vena cava. When these vessels reach the region of the hip and the ilium, they branch to form iliac arteries. Now, in the cat, there is no common iliac artery. The internal iliac here does not fuse with the external iliac here as it does in humans. While there is a common iliac vein in cats, there is not a common iliac artery. This is all the external iliac artery. The external iliac artery crosses the body wall, leaves the pelvic body cavity, and as it passes along the thigh and the femur, it is known as the femoral artery. As the femoral artery um, proceeds inferiorly, it then passes through an adductor muscle that makes um, a dive through this muscle through a, a channel known as the adductor hiatus. And so, um, as it does so, it passes behind the knee and is known as the popliteal artery and vein before going to the uh, lower leg where it becomes the tibial artery and vein. And so here, behind the knee, this is the popliteal artery and vein, and then this is where it uh, splits to form the tibial artery and vein. Now, there is a, there's an anterior and posterior tibial. There is also an alternate route back from uh, the lower limb, a very superficial uh, vein known as the great saphenous vein. So here one can see, even um, before muscles are dissected, after the skin is removed, this is so superficial that it is evident. So the great saphenous vein proceeds from the foot and joins the femoral vein near where it will pass through the body wall. And so this is an alternate route back from the foot.